We're going to talk about conduit fill. When we talk about conduit fill, I want everybody to understand we're not talking about impassive conductor. We talked about impassive conductor a little while ago, right? Where if you get more than three current current conductors in a conduit, you got to start reducing the impassity. People want to con constantly combine those two conversations. No, no, no. We're talking about physical space inside of a conduit. How much physical space can we fill that up? We don't care about, when we're talking about conduit fill, how much impassity can flow in a con conductor. That's a whole different conversation, right? But people want to combine those two different conversations. This is talking about physical feel of conduit, okay? And here's kind of a layout of what we've got. We've got Table mm -hmm. 1, Chapter 9 that gives us our information. We've got Notes to the Table, Chapter uh, 9, Table 1. Then we've got Table 4 and 5. We'll get into those in a moment. This is the interior size of the conduit and the exterior size of the conductors, right? And we're going to, how many can we physically fit? And we've got NXC. NXC is great if all the conductors are the same size, right? And we've got the same conduit or raceway for the entire length. Here's the problem we have with using Annex C. A lot of the conduit systems might have multiple different types of raceway in one conduit run, right? We might have some PVC underground, might have some rigid stub up, some EMT above the ground, might even have some flexible stuff along the way. So each one of those conduit systems have their own interior space. But let's look at this table one, chapter nine. It looks like this, right? And R says percent of cross section of conduit and tubing for conductors and cables. We have a number of conductors and or cables, one, two, and over two. Then we got cross section area and percentage, 53, 31, 40. Where it says 53, 31, 40, I want you to draw a percentage sign over there so that you know that it's a percentage of it, okay? And we're gonna look at our notes down there. Note number one down there says CNXC for the maximum number of conductors and fixture wires, all the same size. I want you to highlight all the same size. And then it says total cross-sectional area, including insulation, permitted in trade sizes of applicable conduit or tubing. Now let's find NXC at the beginning. If you got those tabs, it's got a, you got a tab for NXC. NXC in the 2020 starts at page 730. Let's look at page 730. And this is table C1. C1 says maximum number of conductors or fixture wires in EMT, electrical metallic tubing. So at the very top of the page with your pen write EMT. On page 731 this table continues, so write EMT over there on top of the page, but then find that THHN, THWN, THWN-2 and go ahead and highlight that. Now Using that th THHN, THWN, THWN-2 location, you see that 14 all the way down to 1,000 listing there. And if you scroll from left to right, at the top, you'll see the different sizes, trade sizes of conduit. So let's look at um, a typical 3 quarter inch EMT. How many number 10s, THHNs, can I put in a 3 quarter inch EMT? And how many number 12s can I put in a 3 quarter inch EMT? And this is that 40% fill. I want you to understand that that's at 40% fill. This table does not be go beyond 40% fill. How about for two inch EMT? How many four aughts can I put in there? Four. Now turn the page and you're going to continue on with this C1 table and turn the page again you're going to run out of C1 and come into C1A. At the top of page 734 C1A table I want you to write EMT but I, also, I want you to write compact compact beside it. Now when we talk about compact conductors, that's typically what we're seeing with aluminum, where you no longer have round conductors grouped together in, under one insulation, right? You kind of have that, what used to be round, been extruded through a compressor type deal, and now everything's kind of squished together, there's no air voids between the round, and instead of having round, you kind of got triangulated sharp edge pieces of aluminum. And what they've done, they shrank that down. They took all the air gaps out of the round, uh, what would be round, and made, kind of made it all squished together, and made that conductor smaller. And they make that conductor smaller, well, of course, you can put more of them into the same size conduit. Let's look at the compact THHN. Uh, notice that they started a larger deal. How many four aughts can go on a two inch? If 
55. We gain the wire, right? Because we got smaller overall outside dimensions of the compact conductor versus a standard conductor. You need to watch out for this. If you're asked a simple question, how many conductors of whatever type of insulation will fit in a certain type of conduit, don't use table A. And the reason why I say that, this is C1A. Well, that's all about EMT. There's 14 different tables in Annex C. The reason why, there's 14 different types of circular raceways. If you turn the page, you'll see what I'm talking about. Let's go to C2 table. C2 table is ENT. That's electrical non-metallic tubing. Keep on flipping. Run into C3 table. What's C3? That's flexible metallic conduit. <coughs> Keep on flipping. You'll run into C4. You get an IMC. Like I said, there's a lot back here in NXC. Make sure, one, that you're looking at the right uh, table for the type of raceway. Two, that you're making sure that you're looking at not compact, not the, not the A tables. Each of these have an A table, right? So if it's just a simple, we've got X amount of conductors, all the same size, what size conduit? Or, they throw the question this way, I've got this size conduit, how many of this size wire can I fit into it? You can simply just go back to NXC, call it done.